Well, hello everybody. This is Jonathan Betts, past master clockmaker, um, introducing my mother, Margaret Betts, who was a wren at Bletchley Park during the war, and who's going to say a few words of reminiscence in the form of answers to questions which we hope might be of some interest to you. So, as a 19-year-old in Ipswich, in Suffolk, you joined the Wrens in late 1942. Yes, that's right. Why the Wrens? Well, um, I was living, in, uh, my father was away um, in, in the air ministry. I was living with my mother and working alone in the house. I had two brothers, but they were both, one was, they were both in the army. And um, uh, um, I was working in the in, inland revenue office, rather boring work, when, when we suddenly, very unfortunately, had the, new, the news of my eldest brother, Pat, who had, was reported missing at sea, mm. presumed dead, or, or a feared lost, yes. Mm. And um, my other brother, my younger brother, was um, had joined the um, paratroopers, so he was out leaping out of planes and, and doing unarmed combat. And I suddenly thought, what am I doing here? Just sitting, working about people's taxes. So I just suddenly decided, as I heard about my brother being just done at sea, I thought, right, I'll join the Wrens, and that's the new, best I can, thing I can do. Okay, so, so when you joined up, uh, what happened first? Well, yes, well, I had to report to Mill Hill School in London, which was a boys' school, a big boarding school, and the Wrens had taken it over for the for the, the war time. And um, when I got, we had to take our clothes. We, we were booked in, we had bedrooms there. And uh, there were about, I would say, um, th I would think about 30 Wrens because um, during the, my time there, we had we all had to go into a classroom and, 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 and do some pr uh, little tests and things. So I know that would have been about a, a, a a classroom full, 30, 30 of us, but I don't honestly know how many. And um, I went, to, I went, we went to bed that night, and I was sharing the, the bunk bed with another girl. We made, we made friends, and we were told that we had to be up at morning in the morning by six o'clock, and uh, we were given a cup of tea, and then we we were all put to cleaning out um, the 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 the, loo, the the toilets and basins and washing the floors. I, I don't know what that was about. I can only um, imagine that all these sorts of things were just testing us for seeing how we responded to this sort of thing. That's um, all I can tell. Anyhow, we um, th then assembled in the hall. Um, I don't really, I think we were there for about two days. I really don't know how long. I know that I went out with this friend of mine and we wandered around the town and um, then we came back in and the interview started. Um, we, we, one by one, we went around and into the different, into, into an office where there was a, 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 a Wren officer sitting. I think it was, no, well, anyhow, it was somebody in uniform. Mm -hmm. And um, it, um, it just, in, I, don't, I can't remember what, we were, what questions I was asked or anything like that, but I came through the, um, oh no, I do remember, because I just said yes, 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 and so on. And just as I got to the door, she said, oh, by the way, I said, yes. She said, you haven't learnt yet to say mum, have you? Oh, <laughs> so I obviously was already in the wrens, it appeared. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, and, and, um, but she was laughing. But anyhow, they, so with another day went past. I, I just have a feeling they probably watched us and saw how we got on and how, what we were like mix, mixing with other people and, and um, our natures and that sort of thing. And... Um, the net, the, uh, five, one day, after one or two or three days, I don't know how long, um, we were all um, called out into the hall and uh, all I know is that I was there and they called out my name. They were calling out girls' names and telling them to, to do something or other and we were told there were about seven or eight of us. I you were being think. separated then? What? You were being separated. We were being separated, yes. And... Um, uh, we were told to be ready um, to, to leave Mill Hill tomorrow. And then when the morning came, of course, we were all separated into, into little... Because I, I presume that a lot of um, 
the kind of work that they had to they had to pick out the kind of post that the girl had the posting the girl had to go to obviously if she had been trained as a cook then she would go into the rent as a cook or if she could drive a car she may be i don't know what it was but they, they were best suited to but they obviously had had gone right through every, um, our our history and and everything and um, pick, decided what we would be best suited for mm. And so there were about, I think there were about seven or eight of us were picked out and we were told to go outside. We packed our bags and everything and we got into um, a kind of jeep thing and um, uh, uh, off we set. Um, Stan East Coast, I think it was. East Coast or Stanmore, I know both those places were. Mm. And, um, uh, and told, and given, sent, given quarters, you know, a place to go, to, to go, shown to our cabins, as it was called. Mm. And, um, oh, I'm terribly sorry, I've forgotten the first thing. Before I left Mill Hill, we, the seven of us, the, the seven that went off in this van, were called in to an, uh, to an office, and there was a very serious-looking man there, and he was in uniform. I can't tell you what kind of uniform it was. I, it was so, everything was so exciting. It was just like setting off on a very unexpected journey. And everything was very exciting. And um, there, he t said to me, he told me I was going to do some very, very secret work. And I must carry the, I must never, ever talk about it. And I had to sign something, of course. And that I had to carry the secret to the end of my life. He said, you, will, you are never, ever to talk about this, ever, in the whole of your life. And he was very, very emphatic and, um, you know, and I thought, gracious, this is interesting. Anyhow, then we all went off to the Stanmore, the East, about seven or eight of us. I assume they'd had the same interview, I don't know. And um, we were given our uniform, that was always, that was an interesting time when we queued up and we were given the white blouse and um, fitted, you know, for the, 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 the uniform and thick woolen stockings. And um, you were invited to a, to a concert that evening, I think. Oh, you? yes, I'd forgotten that. And then um, we were told that t tomorrow you're, you're, you are going, that you are going to, um, to find out, you are going to start your training. It was very exciting. And then they said, and by the way, we'd like you all to come along to a little concert tonight we're giving in the, in the forecastle. And um, so we went along, it was a lovely musical concert on um, gramophone records and things. And they played. The first time I'd, I'd heard it, the Enigma variations by Elgar, and I'd, I thought, <laughs> lovely, N nice tune, and so something else they play, but... That no idea it. of the significance of it. No idea at all, of course, of the significance. And it wasn't until afterwards that we suddenly saw the point of that. It was rather mm. amusing yes. that they had introduced us by, in that way to our, what, the job we were going to do. And then um, we all went... Um, uh, we would next day we went down into the workplace um, and we, we were um, told all the, the bombs were there there was a bomb there and we, we were told we were shown how this is to, a decoding machine a decoding machine bomb yes. with an e yes bomb with an e yes and there was a petty officer who was to, who was um, uh, t teaching us and it was quite complicated we had to build up the back plug the back all up with, with various thing, with things and we had a, what we called a menu and um, telling you sort of A to B and B to C and all that sort of thing, you're plugging it all up with these um, wires and plugs and then you ha we um, had to put in the front of the machine, um, I don't know if any of you have ever seen one, been seen one of these bombs but they had um, what you call them, cylinders um, drums. Yeah, dip, drums, that's right, mm. drums. Different colours and so on. They had to be all fitted along and and, um, and they had to be set. And how we were, t we would, we, I won't tell you how, all the details, it's boring, but mm. we were told how to manage that um, bomb and what we had to do every time it stopped. We had, we had to start it off and every time it stopped, all the wheels were whirling round, every time it stopped, we had to make a note of all the. Um, the, the numbers, the, 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 the letters, I mean, that they, they'd stopped at, each individual one, and um, they started off again, and, and, um, and, and they were all different colours too, we had to make a note of that. And when, when it stopped, we had to make a note of where the, the positions they'd, these drums had stopped in, and their colours, and take it to 
um, another wren who would be using an enigma, one of the original enigma machines. You've probably um, heard about how that German enigma machine was captured by very brave men who got into it. So we knew exactly how the enigma machine worked. And then we had to, um, uh, then she had to work out, of course, the menu, the menu I had got was like A, um, is equals B and B equals C. That was the way that the machine um, was supposed to be. And then I took this down to this girl who'd got the same, given the menu to show how to work it. And then if so, she pressed A. She had an enigma, an enigma machine. To... Yes, the enigma machine, if, if she, like a typewriter. If she pressed A, according to my um, menu, it should come up to B or something like that. And if it didn't come up to what it should have done, well, then it, they knew it wasn't any good. But if it did, you see, it was a, it was a, that was how we broke them. If we found one that coincided by tapping the menu out um, on, on the Enigma machine. And, um, and that was how, that was the work we had to do. And um, so, so when did you actually move from uh, the training at Stanmore to to um, to Bletchley and the outstations? Yes, well we worked at, at, at Stanmore itself for quite a while. For, I remember we used to dash up to London in our spare time and I, you know, was enjoying life there. And then one day, um, a number of us were told, I don't know whether it was all the same lot, but we were told we were, we were going to be moved to one of the outstations where um, there, there were vacancies. And um, so and we were moved, I've forgotten how many there were of us, we moved out to Gayhurst Manor and we were very fed up. We said, oh, we're stuck in the country, there'll be nothing to do. Oh, this is horrible, we didn't want to be posted out here. And we may we moaned and moaned, but in the, in, looking back in the end, it was the, we had far more fun um, in that um, at Gayhurst Manor, going being invited to um, dances at the local air, air force um, air, you know, air thing. Air. So, so Bletchley was the base, but Bletch, there were several. There um, were outpatients. outpatients. There were an outpatient, um, outpatient, <laughs> outstation. There was an outstation at Woburn Abbey and um, Crawley Grange. Crawley Grange and uh, the big houses. Wavenden Manor. Wavenden, yes, Wavenden, and I would, we were at Gayhurst, and the the building they had a building in the grounds with the bombs in the proper bombs, um, le a row of bombs that we mm. could all work in. There were three watchers, and um, uh, and so we so I we started our work. It was. Um, very exciting when we got there and, and we handed a, a, point, a pointer to a bomb and you sit we used to sit there at the table in fact some of our um some of the girls were doing crossword puzzles and i forgot to say that while we were at mill hill um apart from um, just uh, they were probably watching us and so on we all went to one of the boys classrooms one day and we sat um down at the desks and we we were given um, a paper of, of all little po little um, problems, little puzzles, and we had to do those. And they, of course, were all part of um, being suitable, Assessed, yeah. Yeah, suitable for Bletchley Park. And um, anyhow, it was it was great fun at um, Wavenden House because Wavenden House, not Wavenden, sort of sorry, Gayhurst, Gayhurst Manor. Mm. Gayhurst Manor was on the main road, on a main road, which ran from London to Northampton. And it was absolutely perfect for hitchhiking, which you may, may be surprised knowing what, what hitchhiking's are like nowadays. But it was perfectly all right to do that. We didn't worry about um, you know, any, any nasty things happening. And um, uh, so we, were, we used to go down at, at the, to the gate of, of um, Gayhurst and stand there and then wait. All the lorries were going up to London and back. And we used to have great fun boring and lorry when we when we had our weekend off we worked we worked three shifts a day a, a, um, evening and a night and then we had four days off and so in those felt four days we used to go off somewhere and um we we um that's how you'd that's go up how, to london would you go up to london or yes or hitchhike somewhere and it was really great fun, and so we did enjoy our times after. And and we and 
I enjoyed the work. I didn't find it boring at all. We, it was better than being in an office because we all sat and had, had a table and a chair to sit by our machines to get up when it stopped and to get up when you when something went wrong. If if the if one of the wheels something went wrong, we had um, technicians who we could call them and they would come and see see to what was wrong with the machine. And the one we had at Gayhurst was an Air Force man, and he had a dreadful stutter. He couldn't get his words out like that at first. And I thought, well, how did he ever get into the Air Force? And then I suddenly realised that he had prob probably been a pilot or something like that and had a good life and had had some dreadful accident and, and, and he was suffering from, from a trauma. Post-traumatic post stress. Post-traumatic stress. And rather than sort of kick him out or whatever they would do, they put them on to, because he was still all there with his knowledge, technical mm. knowledge. And I thought, what a lovely idea. You know, he he was still doing some good work, even though he couldn't do he couldn't do his flying. And um, so, uh, did, did you have a, a great sense of the importance of the work you were doing, or was it just thought of as humdrum? No, it was very strange. I I really didn't. I mean, I think well, we were young. I was nineteen, and um, we. We'd um, finally we had we had all the excitement of I had had all the excitement of joining up and being in the Wrens, and then it, it was it just became the regular thing. It was like a job. No, I never really um, I, I appreciated it, but I knew it was very very secret, and I would never Indeed. have told. And the strange thing was, I told you we hitchhiked. That when we hitchhiked and asked to be dropped off at Gayhurst Manor, nobody ever said, "What is a Wren doing?" at Gayhurst Man, and nobody ever asked. It's always surprised me, and I can't think why. But one of my great friends lived in Northampton, because we were on the, I told you, on the line between Northampton and London. And when she went home on leave, after she'd started here, she said, her mother said, oh, by the way, the um, rumour spreading all around Northampton about what are those wrens doing in um, Gayhurst Manor is that they're all rather naughty wrens that have had to... Um, be, to be t taken, you know, had to be, to be taken off for a Because they were expected. Because they were expected. <laughs> <laughs> and I dare say they encouraged think, that of idea. Of course, that, that suited <laughs> people in authority, I should think, very well. Mm. But actually, the, the, the um, hitchhiking I thoroughly enjoyed. Apart, I mean, I did enjoy the work too, and I say it was... Um, and night work was rather strange, but it was all it was all so new and exciting because it was new. And there was a great social life, wasn't there? You, the American airbase nearby. I'm going to say the the, um, the the hitchhiking to start with. I'm going to say mostly lorry drivers, and they were so nice. And I um, I can rem remember I the the best. What roast Sunday did lunch I ever had during the war was you know meat was rationed you couldn't mm. and I I imagine that lorry drivers being do, doing essential work for the war were probably given extra rations but we that we, we used to stop off if it was lunchtime and you'd take me into the lorry drivers pull in and we'd have the most marvelous roast oh. roast beef meal and <laughs> <laughs> never had a better one it was marvelous they were all so nice. But the American air bases put on parties, didn't they, for the for the, uh, the local? Oh yes, yes, yes. They had a party, and um, they used to send. Um, you know, they we one of our um, leading wrens. It's like a like that's like a a um, what's the army? Well, just a commanding officer. No, no, the leading wren, like like a like a. Um, what what uh, he's an ordinary ordinary soldier. What do you call him? A private. Private. No, sergeant. Oh, so she, leading wren, was the equivalent of a sergeant in the army. And um, when we had an invitation to go to the American nearby, American aerodrome nearby, um, uh, she, she drove us in a jeep for about, I don't, don't know how we, somehow we got the invitation. Anyhow, there were four or five of us and we went over to, to the uh, um, American and um, one, one time we were going, and of course, if we were going over there, um, we we were very careful, although we had these black woolen stockings, we managed to, because we with our uh, coupons, we would go and get black nylon stockings. We weren't supposed to, but we did, and wear those, and, the, the, and um, smart 
fresh white blouse and so on, and look at, looking, looking, looking smart. your best for the American. Yes. So um, when we got in, I remember one night there was a girl called, um, or, uh, called her Mary Jones or something, and she came rushing out at the last minute saying, wait for me, I'm coming. And she'd got her thick woolen black stockings on and a scruffy old, she obviously hadn't bothered and changed. And the uh, leading wren who was going to be doing the driver's off said, Jones, what are you doing? You, uh, you haven't, you, you're not going dressed like that, are you? And she said, Oh, I only go for the food <laughs> because they had, they act. We had a, a sort of supper while we were there, but when we went in the during the evening, and they had real coffee. You know, you we hadn't tasted real coffee for so long, and really lovely food. So that was great fun. <laughs> and um, uh, the only time um, it got, well twice I had a, a slightly tricky <laughs> occasion. Um, one was. Um, uh, when I was picked up by two um, Air Force officers, and they were, I was driving back to, to Bletchley then from Ipswich, and um, they came to Cambridge, and, and we passed through Cambridge, and I had hitchhiked and got got a lift, and um, they suddenly, the two of them started whispering, one whispered to something in the other one's ear, and I thought, what's going on? And they said, oh yes, yes, and then they suddenly turned off the main road, didn't say a thing to me and drove down a country road with woods on either side. And I thought, oh, oh, I've been so, I've been too trustworthy. If something awful's gonna happen, I'm gonna have to fight, but gonna, you know, I'm gonna get ready. And um, I thought, and the two of them, oh, that's dreadful, whatever shall I do? And I just sat there gripping the, the seat at the back and thinking, I have to get ready to run. And they, they finally drove into a wood, into a glade, um, turned the car off, one got out of the, of, um, the car door, and, I, and I, was, I was thought, which car, which door is he getting out of? Which door shall I jump out of? And I was really so frozen there with fear that I just didn't really, I rushed for the, 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 the door handle, it wouldn't work, and I saw one go to the back, and the other one came round to the other door and opened the door and said, would you like to join us for a picnic? <laughs> and he'd gone round to the back and got a great big hamper out of the back. Aww. And I was, oh, I, I, I never told them what I thought. I thought it might be an insult or something, but I'm sure they knew, they must have known. Mm. But um, they got naughty. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> and the other one was when time was when I was going to London to meet a boyfriend. And they had told, uh, I made this arrangement about a week beforehand, and I was t suddenly we had a, a, a an order through that nobody was to leave um, the, the, to, to go beyond the base, the, the Gayhurst Manor, more than a mile or two miles or something like that. The idea, I believe, was to keep the roads clear. It may have been D-Day or something like that, but there was some official reason why they wanted the roads kept clear and um, everybody safe inside. So um, I'd arranged to meet this boyfriend and I was determined to go. And so I said to my friend, no, I'm going, I'm going to see if I can get a lift. She said, and she said, it mustn't, it must be a reason. I said, I don't care. And I went to the end of the road and of course there was nothing, no lorries came past. They had all been told the same thing. So I'm just standing there helplessly when suddenly a very official looking car pulled up beside me and said, what do you want? And I said, oh, good, could you, are you going to London? Could you take me? And so they said, oh, yes, hop in. So I hopped in and thought, oh, my luck is good today. And I, they drove quietly for about two miles and they suddenly stopped. And um, I said, what's happened? He said, this is where you get out, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so I would have had to walk back all those miles. And, I, and, and um, so anyhow, I, they said, well, I said, oh, please, please. They said, why are you going to London? I said, well, I would, I'm meeting a boyfriend. Well, please, please, please. And they said, all right, we'll take you. But you naughty girl, you mustn't do anything like that again. They never reported me, thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so I got away with that one. Yeah, um, as I say, I, d I don't think I really took my job seriously enough. I but you were it. you were very concerned about security, and and oh, you, yes. you told me that you were all very um, concerned about um, being overheard oh, in yes. cafes. Yes, what things. happened? We all went into the town um, one one day, and um, this this was after the very when we were first when it was still fresh in our mind, the warning from the man where we were still training in Eastcote or Stanmore, one of them. And we all went out to have a coffee, about four of us, and um, sitting round the table. 
that we'd have half a coffee and a snack. And um, one of us said to the other, picked up the, men, the menu, and um, no, one, sorry, one of us said, um, oh, anybody got a menu? Um, and immediately the other three of us went, shush, 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 shush you know. <laughs> and suddenly realised, we, we realised that menu was a word we shouldn't use. Aww. We thought that anyway. So you and, were concerned about security? Oh, yes, we, oh, we were. Oh, yes, definitely. Mother told me afterwards that um, after I, joined, I had gone up to join up, um, some very official looking men in suits, you know, the sort of thing, came round and um, to, my, to, her, to our house, and my father was there, my mother, and they wanted to speak to my father. So my, so the, he, my mother took to, showed them into the other room. My father and these men went into the other room, and um, then they came out. We never heard what it was, but my, my mother told me that afterwards. And I thought, ah, oh, they must have been... I don't know what it was, but... Um, checking on your background. Yes, tra tra uh, ch checking if, uh, about... Uh, they, were, they were very, very careful about who they were taking on. I don't know what they asked my father. He died before I could ask him. And my mother didn't really tell me about this till later on when we were discussing things. What, what were you told to say if anybody asked you what you did? Oh, we were told to say that we were writers, which I don't understand because if I, if I were a writer, I would have been wearing the badge on my sleeve. And I mean, in fact, towards the end, of the, this was queried for that reason, and they still didn't change it. But towards the end of the war, they did, um, they did change it. I've forgotten what they put on now, but they did, they did check, they stopped that writer thing because it wasn't altogether, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't easy mm. when they, you say you're a writer. And well, and then you haven't got the, the, the badge on. Mm. So VE Day came and uh, you were stopped at um, um, code breaking at Gay Oh, Hurst. yes, yes. Um, so you, you could then have finished? The war in Europe finished and it was all very nice. We went up to London and had the, to join the jubilation. Yes. And then, of course, what were they going to do with us? All of us. I don't know what they did to anybody, but I was sent to, um, no, I was told that they wanted me to go to Bletchley Park to work on Japanese codes, because we were still at war with Japan. I don't know what the, everybody else had to do, because I, I was the only one that from my own crowd sent over there. But I, we were taken, well, there were two or three of us actually, um, we were taken there every day from Gayhurst around, because it wasn't far away from Bletchley Park. We were taken there every day to work and picked up at night to come back. And um, that was how it went on. But uh, but apart from that, before we had before I went to a Bletchley Park to work, they did just let us know that we were atta attached to Bletchley Park. We often used to go over there for lectures and meetings, and so we all were well, uh, were, were well, accustomed, you know, we we all knew all about Bletchley Park, and this is what we who we were working for. And uh, we had some nice days out, out there sometimes. But on Japanese codes, you were there all the uh, time? On Japanese codes, this was a permanent thing. I had to be taken every day and brought back every, every night. And, and an interesting thing that I discovered when we went to the Veterans Day was when we drove through Bletchley, I said, of course, you'll recognise this. And you said, oh, no, we, we never saw Bletchley Village. No, we were delivered directly to the man. No, we were always heading for the bright lights. When we, when we went out to London or to Northampton or to something like that, we weren't interested in... Don't forget, we're only 19. We weren't interested in little villages and things, you know. Mm, sure. But, um, <laughs> no, so... Um, I've forgotten really and the Japanese codes were rather oh, different. They were very boring. We, I would grumbled about being in an office job, but that was why I joined the REMS. And here I was sitting at a table, not, 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 not um, um, manipulating a bomb, and I'm sitting at a table, um, with, I've forgotten now, it was very strange, I can't really explain it, it was like little, little strips of, of, um, of bamboo you had to keep, I, I, don't, I really don't know what it was all about, but I knew what I had to do, and that was, to, we were given some, um, some words in, in, in Japanese. Japanese characters. Japanese characters, which were words of um, like, uh, um, high winds or storm or um, uh, rain or something like that 
and if you if, if they were contained in that message that you, you were supposed to break it meant that it was just a weather report which meteorological was, uh, sir? meteorological oh, meteorological yes it was a meteorological thing and that and then in fact that message that secret message they had got was just a weather report and wouldn't waste their time on it and that was what we were doing we were um, um, what's the word I want? You could discard it. Yes, we were uh, making it. Me, no, oh, I don't I can't know the word. We were taking all the unnecessary stuff. Sifting out. through. Sifting, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And um, that that was very important. It saved them the job of doing it, in other words. But I did find that rather boring. So, um, but it was all but, important. But Somebody all, had to do it. But yes. I thought Japan, we don't, we're not interested in that and so on. And um, I didn't know what was going on. I just knew vaguely we were at war with Japan. I didn't understand wh why or who it was. But after the war, when I came home, then I, then I started finding out um, that, that uh, Japan had, that they were going on about how cruel the, Jap the Japanese had been to some of our prisoners of war. And... Um, I ended up, believe it or not, marrying a man from Ipswich who I'd never met and who'd been uh, a prisoner of war with a Japanese. You point to his photograph. Oh, now. yes. That's my, my husband, dear. Yeah. And if I had known when I was working on the, on the, uh, the Japanese codes that, that that poor man was slaving away, half starved, oh, and very badly treated, I would have put my heart more into it, I think, the thing that I was helping him. And that was quite an extraordinary um, coincidence. But one thing about the work there, it did take it was it did take it out of, of um, anybody doing one weekday watch, the next week afternoon watch, and the week after all night watch. You can imagine that that is not an easy thing to, for your body and, and everything else to adapt to. And um, uh, and also this fear of um, giving the giving the secret away. And I remember one one of the girls um, was going to ha she had to have just a, a, a mild kind of operation on on her teeth I think or something. But she would be anaesthetized, and she was terribly worried. We'd say you un when I'm under the anaesthetic, I might give the secret away. Something like that. We all it, it did have an effect a little bit on our psychology sometimes and um, and um, and also this, the, the odd way we, our bodies had to adapt to to um, you know to it, the it, schedule it, it, it's a schedule it um, it it wasn't an, e an easy job to have really although the actual job itself wasn't um, arduous but the actual t the, the, the way your your life changed you know mm. like that. And the secrecy was maintained because you never ever disclosed what no, you did. No, no, nobody ever. Even to your family until the 1980s. No, 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 you, no, my family never knew. But they never pressed me, and I'm pretty certain. Well, we did know in the 1980s because you eventually told us. Oh that. yes, then. Mm. But I mean, during the, while the war was on, um, they were never. Nobody ever asked. No, they? yes, uh, they, 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 they didn't um, worry me. You just uh, uh, that is why I think that person from head from um, in, who came round in the car spoke to my father, and I think he must have said, "Don't ask." Don't ask. Mm. He, I don't know what he said, <laughs> but they, but my mother and father didn't worry me. Mm. But, um, Great. Thank you very much.